Okay, we've got a very special quote from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens today, and I've created some decorations here, a little Christmas tree and the color scheme, so you can thank me for that. Um, let's, let's read it out. So, really for a man who had been out of practice for so many years, it was a splendid laugh, a most illustrious laugh, the father of a long, long line of brilliant laughs. Okay, Charles Dickens. What's going on here? Well, at a literal level, okay, we've got a man, basically Scrooge, his name is Scrooge, and he's been out of practice. He uh, he doesn't like laughing. He's a very grumpy, you know, bitter kind of dude. And now he's suddenly undergone a transformation. He was, uh, he's able to, you know, create spl splendid laughs, and this particular laugh is the father of a long, long line of brilliant laughs. Uh, and... This, this quote is deceptively short, but the amount of techniques that you can talk about is absolutely insane, and we would need at least like three videos, even more, to talk about all of these. So we're not going to do all of that today. Today we're going to talk about personification, because I think this is the most interesting thing that we can talk about and analyze uh, to a deep level in this particular quote, all right? Uh, we'll talk about the meaning effect and all of that in a second, but the main thing I want you to notice is the writer's purpose. This is the purpose of this quote is to convey or end of this technique is to convey the transformation of the character from someone who used to be sad and angry and all of that to someone who uh, is now jolly and, and bright as an individual. Cool, so let's look at the basic analysis first and then we'll talk about the more advanced deep analysis that we can get to and uh, a bit of foreshadowing there's going to be a 9000 IQ section which, which is awesome okay so the basic response what are we talking about here uh, the, the, the basic meaning uh, the basic interpretation here is that there's going to be a lot more laughs this person's going to be happy and laughing in the future for a long long time okay so Dickens personifies the laugh to convey that it is the father of a line of laughs and that many more laughs will occur. This marks the transformation of the character from being out of practice and unfairly, uh, an unhappy fellow to being a jolly individual who laughs all the time. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this particular analysis. You know, it talks about personification um, and then it reaches the writer's purpose. Okay, but it's very literal. You know, it talks about a long, long, long line of laughs, and there's a lot of laughs, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there's, there's not much depth here. Okay, so with the more advanced stuff, we're going to talk about the deeper meaning that's created and the effect that's also created. So, first, let's talk about the effect the lively and cheerful atmosphere. Okay, so this laugh is, uh, is described positively, but this personification just takes it to the next level. It brings the scene to life because it literally describes the uh, this laugh as a human, okay? So while Dickens positively describes a laugh as splendid and most illustrious, you know, boring, positive, you know, but nothing very, very interesting, he further personifies it as the father of a line of brilliant laughs. The personification brings the laugh and the scene to life, thus establishing the cheerful Christmas atmosphere, all right? So we've looked at the cause-effect relationship between personification and the lively, cheerful uh, atmosphere. But there's something additional, something uh, much deeper here that uh, you might have noticed. So just reading this sentence, the father of a long, long line of brilliant laughs. I don't know about you, but I get the sense that there's something very epic, something very grand and momentous about this occasion, right? Uh, remember the context. This is London, okay? Dickens, 1800s. It's a very patriarchal society, all right? And so, talking about the father, there's something significant about it, you know, the head of the family. Number two, a long, long line, a long, long bloodline. You know, there's something... That it, it just... Bloon. <laughs> it's bloodline. Okay. So the connotations of a bloodline is that there's some steep historical significance here. What do we think about when we talk about bloodlines? We think about kings, we think about emperors, we think about the royal family, okay? So just reading this as the reader, we get the sense that there's something very epic, and this is what the 9000 IQ interpretation is about. And notice 
how I say the interpretation. It doesn't mean you can only talk about one of these things. You can actually talk about all of this in a single paragraph. You know, we're, we're, we're progressing from the, the superficial aspect to a deeper aspect to an even deeper part that is probably deeper than the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth. All right, so let's talk about it. Furthermore, the, pers the personification of this laugh as the ultimate patriarch, the original ancestor of some long, long bloodline, sort of like this guy, the chimp, you know, the beginning of something, something new, something important. It makes the reader perceive the laugh as something bigger, as something, you know, a birth, a genesis. It marks both the momentous transformation of the out-of-practice character into a jolly person, as well as the exciting beginning of something entirely new. All right, so that is, uh, let, let's just break that down a little bit. Personification, cool. We talked about uh, the deeper meaning, which is it's, it suggests as a genesis, it's the origin of something incredible and important and epic. And finally, we connect that to the momentous transformation of Scrooge, of this character. Notice how I've also mentioned reverence here, because I think as a reader, you sort of feel a kind of awe you know, when, when, when we're reading this, you know, at least a hint of it. And that's what I'm trying to get at here, but I haven't included it in the, uh, in the actual analysis. That's a task for you. Awesome. So that's been a Christmas carol. Merry Christmas.